In this video, I will cover the FIGAF migration tool from end to end. So all the things that you can use the tool for to speed up your migration process. The first thing we want to look at is our migration cockpit and our migration setup. Before we can get started with that, we need to install the FGAF tool. It's a standalone Java application. You can run it on your laptop for proof of concept, but we recommend that you run it in SAP BTP Cloud Foundry. Once you have done that, you will connect it to the different uh, systems in your landscape, the PI and the integration suite or CPI systems. Then you go to this configuration and you set up what are the source system for migration? What is our target system for our CPI system? And where is our productive system? Once we have done that, we get uh, this overview. And on this overview, we have a way to manage our migration project. The first thing we want to do is we want to generate the report. This will create a report of your current PI PO landscape and this is really useful to understand what is going on in your system. So in this you got the number of ICOs, our determined type, in the center modules, um, port protocols, message mappings, are there any uh, function libraries used, are there for instance uh, RFC lookups, they would be shown here. We also show the receiver part, uh, splitting modules and the number of messages that is being processed on these scenarios. So this is really a useful tool to to handle the assessment and understanding what is going on with and what you need to migrate. Once you have done the, this, you can start the migration. We recommend that you do a testing a test based approach where you fetch data from your PI system. To do this, you select an ICO and select record messages. We will put them into a test suite. These would be called something that resembles uh, the landscape that you have. We have a number of different policies. We can fetch future messages that will mean uh, it will look for the next 10 hundred messages that's being processed. Or for this, we just have select some messages that has been processed. I've already processed two messages. I'll take those and press save. Next up is just to de determine what uh, test case this is. Uh, I'll add an expression here. We can also add XPath expression to add information about the type of document that's being used or partner information. There's a lot of details that you can do when creating test cases. So now we have created our test case that we have fetched from the PI system. And we can see here we got two inbound and six outbound. If we want to look at the details of these things, we can see the payload here. Uh, we can see what is going on. And let's just make a modification to one of these uh, price elements here. So we know that there is something fishy in our data. You obviously don't need to make modifications to it unless you really have a good reason to do that. Okay, so we will create this as a test case. And now we have a test case that we can use. We can run it on our PI system, but that is not included in the migration edition license. And you don't really need to do that. So now we can, we have a test case. We can see this has been increased by one. The next is we want to migrate this. And to do that, we simply go in here select a package we want to put this into, um, give it a name of the iFlow, daemon. We will check what is going on here. And here we can see we have the sender information, we have the receiver information. These are mapped with some standard uh, module or uh, XSLTs that allow you to m migrate these contents. We can also see that we are getting some different information about uh, the, the container variable issues. So it is something that we need to check out as developers once we get to that point uh, in this uh, orders functions. We can also get some warnings, uh, check the endpoint, and 
uh, yes, we can pr click preview. Now we can see what the migration would look like, what is the iFlow that's being generated. And then we click migrate. This will take all of these artifacts and create a new artifact in our CPI system. And we can log on here and we can see this, this artifact. We can go into edit. This is called sponsored. You can click here and you can get the latest assessment report. If you click here, let's just take the, the high flow here. We need to make modifications to this uh, name here. We'll save it as a version and then we will click deploy. So we will be able to deploy this iFlow. There is probably some different things that you need to check in here. And obviously we can go in and we can check the uh, mappings that has been created. And if you look at these uh, mappings, you will see that here we have a uh, edit script, a user defined function that has been migrated. And we can see we are outcoming the, these things because that is a difference between Groovy and Java. So we handle a lot of all of these things that you would otherwise uh, need to go into. And here we can see that it is using this container variable. So do check it out uh, what is going on and if this is a problem for your migration. Uh, we can also see here that it has fetched up some parameters that is fetched from the uh, operation mapping uh, that has been set up. Once we're done here, we can go back to the, the tool here. We can synchronize. This will download the new version of the iFlow and thereby we can actually see what the difference is between these, uh, these artifacts. And we'll see that at a later point in time. Synchronization finished. That's all good. Okay. So now we have our intern demo here. We can select it. Next thing we want to do is we want to migrate the test cases. So we want to be able to test it. And here we can use the test case we just created. We select migrate iFlow. We add it to an existing test suite. And right now we are getting these artifacts delivered. So it knows where to fetch these data because we have used the mi figure of migration tool. If you've migrated the iFlows in different ways, I want to fetch the data from a different way. You can always go in here and modify and say, this is where you want to fetch the specific from. We select the open test case afterwards because that's just a little easier. And then we go to the testing result here. We can run the test. We will request a license. We'll also use DevOps. We'll see that later. But just so I save some time. We need to press run again. And now we can go in and we can see the result of this test. We can see where this has been processed. So we can easily open here. We can see the messages. We can see what these look like. And if we refresh here, we can see we're getting some errors. Let's check these errors. So the diff here is we got an error up here with some new data that is being processed. And then we are getting the, the difference between because we are on the original payload had added a new value for this uh, weight. Um, so that is why it is different. And I guess this was also what we see here that it is. Uh, this is the time here. So we can go here. We can recompare these uh, documents. So it will compare with this new exception and we can see this one was successful. If we look at the diff here of this one, we will see it is also the price that is different. And th what we have our option here is we can actually go in and we can say, okay, now we want to use this as the new result we want to achieve whenever we are doing testing. So we can run this again. And now we're expecting this higher number of the, the price detail. And if we look at the result here, we can see everything screen. So it is really easy for us, for us to take a test case, migrate it, make some modifications to it if we need to do that, update it, and then we always have a way to keep the test cases updated so we always know we can run these ones as a part of the, the process. 
So if we go back to our item here, we can see we now have one test case uh, for this scenario. If we click on the CPI object, uh, we can see here the, the status of these tests. So we're pretty good to go. Uh, we also have a tracked object. This is the part that keeps track of all the different changes that happens to your integration. One of the things that we do have is our versioning control. And this allows you to actually see what is different between an iFlow. Here you can see if, if we have these items, this is the difference between these, uh, these two models. It has sender and here it has some demo path sender ERP that has been propagated through it. We can browse around the model, search, um, search to find where there are some differences. And this just makes it a lot easier for you to manage these things. We can do a comparison with diff.html also if you want to see the, the differences between different artifacts in here. Um, and we also have a message mapping comparison. So there's a lot of ways you can do comparison of this. Now we want to transport this. Uh, we do have our virtual landscape that allow you to transport the item from dev to dev also and reusing the dev and adding pre and post fixes. We could also transport it to production uh, for the demo here, but let me just move this into our QA system. So we are using this virtual QA system here, and here we've set it up. Um, we will add our Jira service now number, um, so someone else can find out why we did this when we started out with this uh, migration. We can look up the test cases that we have here. As a part of this change, we can run this also to make sure that everything is successful. It runs as we want it to do. Um, and we can see the result here. It's all green. Um, and then we can start the transport. And obviously one, a part of this is also, this is the DevOps process. This is what you can use also after the migration is finished as a way to deliver your integration. We can see that it figures out we need to add the package because that was not transported before. And then we have the iFlow parameters here. Here we can go in and we can search and replace some of these parameters that needs to be done. We can also on a global level go in on the landscape and say if we transport from dev to QA, this is the value that we need. Um, so let's just overwrite this one. Um, we can see here that it finds a name that's called QA underscore end-to-end -end migration, which means that it is easy for us to transport these things and understand what has been transported, what is a part of the virtual landscape. If I can download a parameter report, and this is really useful if you have a large set of transports and you need to understand what's going on in this so you can see all the objects, what they are, what is the, the parameters that you're transporting as a part of this. Then send it to approval. As a, uh, as a developer, I can send it to approval. As an architect or whatever, you can set up on a landscape who can approve this one. Normally, you can obviously not approve your own transports because that would be against good governance. Uh, but to make demos easier, I have a check mark that allow me to also approve these things. I can approve it now. Or I could reject it, but rejection is not that fun. Then it just goes back to the developer to fix it. Now I can actually import it directly into the system. You can also do this via API or a lot of other places. Um, and then it's synchronized and make sure that we have all the details and data that we need to do this, this transport. And yeah, this, depending on system size, uh, will take a little while for it to synchronize. So now it's done. And that means we have everything in place. We can roll back if you want to. We can create the next ticket to, to update to our production. And this will then be the same 
process that you'd need to do. But this DevOps process is one that you'd be able to continuously use as a part of your delivery process. There's a lot of other features in the, the demo uh, on the this uh, DevOps, there's the testing. You can continuously create test cases, etc. And then towards the end of the migration, you will obviously be able to see all the artifacts has been migrated and they are running smoothly in here. So I hope you like this demo. You can see some of all the benefits of the tool that it supports the full end-to-end -end process of your migration, making it a lot easier for you to migrate, simplifying time to do governance documentation, uh, rework, all of these different things, and enabling developers to actually test without involving business uh, too much on some of these scenarios. So I hope you want to try it out. Go to figaf.com and sign up and try it.